it's finally time to talk about some of the key aspects of the game that definitely need to change and some of the things that we're expecting within this season of course we get regarding the artillery 2.0 fiasco that's kind of going on at the minute where wargaming are trying to kind of change it up and at the minute it just seems like they're conveying a message where it doesn't seem to come across all that well and a lot of players still obviously very angry for those of you who play World War 2 of having artillery still at their current state within the game that's not the whole video we're going to be talking about a variety of different things and of course the key motivation for this video is what you guys have been saying in the comment section of these videos we're going to be talking about the newly released season pass which comes with a variety of different rewards what you guys have been saying obviously my own opinions on whether i think that these are actually decent rewards because ultimately that is kind of what the whole season pass is meant to be about it's meant to be about all of these variety of rewards that are supposedly making you want to play the game and currently I'm feeling like some of the rewards are a little bit lackluster and we're not used to seeing um, as little kind of beneficial rewards from these season passes. But without further ado, let's talk first about the artillery because that is the issue that we've been seeing with a lot of things. There's also the matchmaker issue, but that's uh, later on in the video. But first things first, artillery 2.0. Wargaming have come out. They said, you know what, artillery are somewhat... A little bit too strong or at least they are not balanced in the form of like yes they may not do the vast amount of damage yes they might not be able to uh, kind of single-handedly win a team a game because there is one artillery that is innately overpowered or anything like that but it's more about the fact that people obviously get annoyed when all of their hit points get removed by a tank that cannot literally be hit by them at all um, and often it's the people that are moving forward first that they get hit by the artillery, which was kind of the counter to what Wargaming wanted to happen, which was where the people sitting furthest back that are camping are going to be the ones getting hit. But it's in general terms, it's the opposite. It's the people that are moved forward who are constantly spotted that are going to get hit. Obviously, it doesn't take a genius to work that one out, but it's really, really annoying for the majority of players. Me, myself, I don't I don't mind about artillery because, yes, you can play like Super Arty, so it's just one of those things that you just come to accept at, at, at one point when you've been playing World of Tanks for as long as I have, you know, looking at like seven and a bit years now, maybe even seven and a half, and artillery have been part of the game since the very beginning. I have been hit countless times. I've had my game completely ruined through no real fault of my own other than being in a position where artillery can hit you, which is like 95% of the map. So it's no surprise that sometimes you do get one shot by them. Um, but it's more that I get annoyed about the fact that it's even a kind of thing in the game. There is no other real tank that can one shot you not even things like the fe 4005 the fe 215b183 some of the other high alpha uh, tank destroyers even things like the sturm tiger can't even one shot you yes we look down at some of the lower tier vehicles where they are genuinely a little bit too broken where they can just one shot things um but everyone's quite happy to say yep these are broken but artillery having the ability to just one shot people with no real negatives around it other than the fact that you know well, when they get hit they can usually only take one or two hits is the kind of core issue but you guys know all of that already if you've been playing for any length of time and if you're a new player trust me get used to be getting hit and taken out by artillery even if they miss you they take half your health which is another issue but nonetheless what wargaming have said in the past is that they will be looking to actually try and improve the artillery experience by reducing the alpha damage of the t92 which is the american uh, tank uh, artillery <laughs> tank destroyer line if you know what i mean but yeah the artillery line for the americans was the proposed line to be reduced in alpha damage that hasn't actually transpired wargaming are no longer going to test this because they've kind of released this new uh, sound effects that basically highlight that an artillery round is coming towards you just a little bit easier but i mean half the time you've got a 1.9 like second lead time before your shell hits them and by the time that you hear it you've got about half a second to move and half a second just 
in 99% of tanks is nowhere near enough time to actually move so yeah that's just a load of rubbish and also the fact that they've brought in this visual effect so effectively what you can see now in the game is that the tracers will be more visual you'll be able to see them um, coming in and wow at least now you can see the artillery round hit you before you get taken out um, but yeah once again by the time you've seen it it's already going to hit you or not hit you just dependent on whether the artillery shell lands where the person was aiming or not and it's there's no reaction time in the world that's going to be able to make a mouse turn or a medium tank turn and even a lot of the light tanks you still can't avoid it really uh, unless you're super switched on and looking in the sky all of the time but that takes away from the whole point in a light tank where you're supposed to be looking at all of the various different other aspects and yeah it's just one of those things that I feel like Wargaming are now trying to say like yeah we've done our artillery changes we're gonna shove them in a box now and the changes that we've made have already impacted the artillery win rates because apparently they've pulled statistics out of somewhere and said that now it's significantly decreased the amount of damage that they're dealing in every game don't quite know how that has actually came about because I don't see any difference in the artillery and I'm sure you guys probably don't either. Um, not saying that, you know, artillery has to be nerfed. I don't really care, to be quite frank with you. I've played artillery. They're horribly broken for anyone that gets hit by them by any AP rounds from some of the high tier RT or even the very low tier artillery like the M44, the Gorilla. These tanks are absolutely disgusting at their tier they reload in like eight seconds and in fact they're probably more annoying for new players who are trying to jump into the game than a lot of the higher tier artillery where because new players just never get there anyway because they've sick of getting hit by an m44 player that's played like 15,000 battles in an artillery at tier six and thinks that they're class at the game but nonetheless it's kind of annoying Hopefully you guys can give your opinions as to what you do. My personal opinions is it. I would just reduce the alpha like they've been saying that they were going to do for ages. Maybe slightly increase the reload. Don't do too much. Maybe even come up with an actual decent change to artillery whereby you can now fire smoke or fire some sort of beneficial thing where maybe you could up certain things and actually support your team with artillery rounds rather than just having them as purely tank destroying rounds um, and I think that, that would be a much better change obviously this is the age-old discussion and you can leave your comments in the comment section down below how do you think wargaming are handling it and what do you think of the actual artillery changes so far am I completely wrong is being able to hear it before it hits you a beneficial advantage or is being able to see it hit you uh, a beneficial advantage yeah just leave them in the comment section down below and we'll get a good discussion going maybe I'm just seeing the wrong end of the stick as it is um, but Nonetheless, we'll move on now to some of the more um, kind of newer topics of discussion, um, and that is in the form of these season pass changes. And the season pass changes, what we're seeing now is currently like a, a bit of a mishmash of between the Cold War premium tanks and also introduction of some of the um, World War II premium tanks that come in at the same sort of time where you're able to effectively earn kind of both. They're kind of balanced out whereby, you know, there may be two season uh, reward tanks that are Cold War there might be two that are World War Two, and so it ends up kind of balancing out so people don't get annoyed because previously back in the day um, when the first season pass rewards were released sometimes it was heavily weighted to one side um, and I mean even still it, it kind of is in some regards with regards to the actual rewards that they're dishing out not just the tanks themselves but nonetheless I digress the season pass rewards obviously the most recent season comes in with the m51 super sherman uh you've then got this new uh, m41 uh, walker bulldog effect effectively which has the 10 shot unchanged auto loading version of the bulldog that was in the game when it was a tier 7 um, and it has like a 10 shot auto load, 170 damage per shell i believe it was wargaming removed it because it was a little bit too strong guess what's come back it's the walker bulldog with the 10 shot auto loader that was a little bit too strong and so yeah we're going to be seeing it back i have no complaints i absolutely adored this tank when it was back in the day is it going to be overpowered 
don't know. Maybe times have changed off since that period of time when that tank was in the game so maybe it's just nowhere near as good as it, it used to be maybe wargaming have brought in some extra kind of nerfs to the tank in the base value of it uh, that make it somewhat more balanced but of course you can uh, leave your comments if you are playing it as of the recording of this video because it will be published the day before the season gets released and all of these tanks come out. So really looking forward to seeing what this M41 Walker Border comes in with. But of course, if you actually want to purchase it, it costs you 6,000 gold to get the ultimate season pass. Comes with a couple of other things. And to be honest with you, that's been one of the benefits of the season passes is actually the pricing of some of the things. And of course, they reward you with a lot of stuff if you are an actual player that enjoys coming on, you know, not even every Every day, but if you are a somewhat uh, casual to experienced player of World of Tanks, you know, you play quite a bit of it, not necessarily once a week or something like that, but like once every couple of days, you play for quite a few battles each day and you're going to be able to earn all of these rewards that do kind of benefit you if you do play the game. Um, so that's really, really good. I think it's a, a nice aspect. It's definitely one I want to keep in the game if Wargaming continually uh, produce these season passes. I'm not going to complain. Um, but yeah, definitely the distribution of some of the rewards, definitely the actual rewards themselves by re-releasing -re some of the old premiums. I don't necessarily think it's bad to release some kind of premiums that are already in the game for people to buy, um, but what I definitely think should happen, because I've noted this a few times, is that some of these tanks have gone on sale literally the week before for like an extortionate amount of money. People go out and buy these tanks and then literally the next week they come out and release it for free, which of course everyone is going to want to get, but yeah, I just don't like the fact that they get sold. I really would like to see Wargaming introduce a thing where they just will not sell it if it's going to be in the next, you know, couple of months of season passes, then just remove it from any sales that are going to happen, remove it from basically people are going to be able to buy it, so that then people aren't going to just come out, buy it, get really disappointed by the fact that they've spent £20 on one tank and then it's come out literally like a week later for free essentially as part of the season pass because that is a little bit salty I, I would definitely get a little bit annoyed if that was the case and I'm sure many of you guys would know that if you've seen the recent M56 Scorpion video that I've done on the channel which covers that tank in its entirety uh, showcasing the good the bad the ugly all of the good things about it um, that's the tier 7 American tank destroyer that is going to be released as part of this season then I really do implore you to actually go check out that video to see what it's actually like it's not a bad one whatsoever if you play it in the right kind of way it is not a kind of full force just going off in tank but it is one that rewards you being able to use spotting mechanics being able to use camo and just using your dpm as well so really really fun one definitely underrated within world of tanks and i hope you guys check that out but i digress once again effectively what we want is just more consistent rewards some new content that comes as part of the rewards even if it's maybe just introduction of like a season pass based challenge where like once you complete the rank 100 rewards you then get a challenge where then you complete various different rewards to then get premium exclusive content that is just for season pass wielders or users that have managed to get past season rank 100 and then they've got a big challenge that they might be able to do to get like a new tank a new tank skin something extra to just enable people once they've got past like the four week mark where pretty much everyone has completed the season pass by about four to five weeks in and some of these season passes are like eight eight weeks so like you've got two months uh, just something to keep you ticking over in those next couple of months afterwards um, that would just give you something else to do I think that would be really really beneficial for wargaming themselves to keep people active on the game because I always see it every single time that a new update comes in. Everyone's jumping on, completing the season pass. There's a lot of players playing. And then as the kind of five week mark hits, people start dropping off. They're like, well, the season's over. I haven't got that much to do. I'm just going to chill out. And of course, you want to keep people fresh. Lots of content that people can do. Otherwise, they get bored and they jump off and play other things and of course that is probably not what wargaming want and that's definitely not what i want to see when i'm jumping into the game every single day so 
yeah hopefully you guys leave your opinions as to the season pass rewards what changes would you make would you purely just make it that the season pass rewards are new tanks every single time or would you rather see kind of a mishmash of some of the older premiums but also bringing in new content as well um, but these kind of challenges or extras or uh, tank skins or more of that, of that sort of stuff where you can actually jump in and play them uh, once you've got to certain milestones within the season pass I think that would be pretty interesting but yeah that's up for you guys to kind of discuss down in the comments but one other thing uh, that I really want to mention is of course the matchmaker and um, the changes that Wargaming have been making with the matchmaker obviously we have now got pairs matchmaker forever now it is permanently in the game until Wargaming decide that the matchmaker is broken and they need to change it again it feels like that happens every like six months that the matchmaker is somehow now broken and that it needs changing but they can't seem to fix it but nonetheless what we will have with this kind of season pass is the introduction of this pairs matchmaker so pairs matchmaker is effectively where they're ranking people based on skill level against someone else on the enemy team that has a similar sort of skill level so that games aren't just one-sided um i don't think it's really working all too too well because i've been having a lot of um kind of either massive win streaks where you're winning like 10 games in a row or you know you could lose three or four in a row for me personally um but yeah i don't think it's necessarily all too uh worked out in terms of its entirety they've had matchmakers where it's down to class-based matchmaker whereby you used to have um every single tier vehicle and every single class vehicle were the same so if you had five light tanks that were tier one you'd have five light tanks that were tier one on the enemy side and then you'd have two light tanks that might have been tier two and then you'd also have two tier light uh tier two light tanks on the enemy team so it was like all weighted up in that regard um but obviously then you can end up with like uh, a platoon that jumps in and's like playing with like super unicorns in the top tier tanks and then you get like someone that's just literally started with their buddy who's then playing on the other platoon platoon that end up being um like the top tier in that one so never really ended up in balanced ways so yeah it's, it's a difficult topic i think yeah skill based matchmaking is probably the easiest way to balance out the teams but i don't know if there is the vast number of players needed to be able to do that effectively but yeah let me know what you would do to the matchmaker do you find it super annoying is it absolutely one of the bane of your lives or is it um something that you find actually pretty decent you don't have any quarrels with me personally i don't really care i don't think it makes an all too big of a difference but never mind that's just my opinion and of course um i, I don't know it's one of those things that it just depends on what you feel like on the day i feel like if you're already triggered playing world of tanks and finding out that the games that you're having are terrible um yeah it can be really annoying um and of course when wargaming makes some considerably strange changes um then yeah i do see where you're coming from but i just don't really mind it's kind of one of those things that goes over my head now i don't really bother with um trying to keep up to date with the matchmaker because at the end of the day wargaming aren't going to change it for my opinion um but there we go hopefully your guys's opinion are kind of more of a massive um audience and you can let wargaming know what you think on the wargaming discord which i highly recommend you actually do in the suggestions tab or just in the q a and stuff like that and just let them know like if you are finding it really annoying certain things that you want changed because at the end of the day wargaming console have actually been pretty okay with submitting tickets they might not agree with everything that everyone wants which is where some of the big problems have come in but at the end of the day they do actually listen to some feedback which is better than some of the other versions of the game um, but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and of course hopefully it wasn't too much of a ranty one but just one showcasing some of the different things that i think were needed to be spoken about uh, and yeah hopefully it didn't come across all negative or anything like that it's not meant to be like that it's purely just constructive and hopefully if you enjoyed this video and you want to find out about the latest season in world of tanks i will leave a link 
on screen right now on the left hand side of the screen uh, which you can just click on and it will bring you to the update news video which covers everything you need to know and then on the right hand side if you want to get better at world of tanks then I will leave a playlist with various different topics uh, regarding some things that you will probably want to know if you're trying to get better and learn the game other than that I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I hope you join me in the next one goodbye